I know exactly what you're thinking. You like the kind of girl who is crazy, wild, and up for an adventure, and that's probably why you're so into Mero. She loves adventure, and if you bore her with your shitty gear and bad team comps, she'll bite your face off. Hehe, <laughs> boy. Finally, someone out here doing my job telling you your gear is shit and you're a fuck up. Now, here's one thing you need to know about me. I'm a Harley Quinn fan, and Mero just reminds me of her. Something tells me a whole lot of people are about to die. We all know how OP Harley Quinn is in the DC Universe, and lucky for you, that it's the exact same thing here in Outer Plane. Sorry. The voices. Let me make one thing very clear to all of you lot. I'm a G. The G stands for genius. My mind works 10 times faster than all of you nerds. I think 10 steps ahead, and my account is 10 times better than the best. But it ain't much to brag about. So here's what I'm offering you. You finish watching this video and not have TikTok brain, and you will see how a G mind works. And after I've blown your brain to bits, you're gonna pick up the pieces and reconstruct your mindset to a G mindset. So, if you're ready to hear me blow your mind on why Mero is real stupid busted, like the video, subscribe, and smack that naughty bell just like how I know all of you horny fuckers wanna smack Mero ASS FIRST! <laughs> Like every other video I produce and impart my infinite knowledge and wisdom onto you, I like to discuss what the game has packaged to us in the form of marrow. Now, hear me clearly, you cannot build a unit without understanding what that unit does and what the devs at VA games have in mind for said unit. So that's where I'm going to start. Starting with her element, class and subclass. Marrow is a fire ranger under the tactician subclass. What does that tell us? Basically, she has the highest base speed in the game, clocking it at 154 speed. Being a tactician tells me that she has much better survivability than the Vanguard subclass, which was made to run you over with their insane turn cycling ability. That immediately tells me she's going to be a supporter of some sort. Just by looking at her stat breakdown, you're gonna wanna focus on flat attack, defense, and HP percentage just to make the most out of her stats from your gear. Oh my god, flat stats, but I threw most of them away. That's why you're a fuck up. You haven't taken the time to understand that the lower the base stat of a unit, the more potent a flat stat on your gear is. But that's fine, you're watching this video and you're subscribed to me, so you're already ahead of the curve than those incels who think they know it all and not subscribe to me, nor watch a single video on YouTube. Now, let's move on to her skills. Mero's S1 is nothing fancy. Except for the fact that she has an 80% chance to pull a dual attack with your highest attacking unit on the team. This is incredibly broken for a supporter because this is how you give your slow bruisers and attackers a chance to cheat the system and fuck your opponent up. For example, Mero pulling a D Stella for a dual attack gives D Stella 20% priority push because of D Stella's dual attack ability. Now your slow ass D Stella takes her turn 20% faster than she should have which makes her one turn closer to dropping her S3 nuke. Go and read everyone's dual attack ability and figure out what the synergy is there. I'm not gonna spoon feed you everything to you. We're gonna move on to Mero's skill too. This skill has two abilities. If she gets healed, this skill gets cooled down. This skill is also an AoE attack that extends Mero's buff duration and grants your team lifesteal. If you think that sounds insignificant cause lifesteal only heals you for 10% of your total damage done, think again. Here's a hint. Meru gets the lifesteal buff, she attacks, heals, and cools down her own S2. Bet you didn't think about the interaction there, did you? Meru's S3 increases your team's attack and accuracy and grants itself one turn of immortality. Pay attention, being immortal is different from being invulnerable. She can get hit, she just doesn't die. This is also an AoE attack. Now, your first impression on this skill is going to be, oh, but she does the same thing as Cindy. Well, you're partially right, but mostly wrong. See, Cindy's job is to extend the buff duration of your team. Giving attack and accuracy buff is just an added bonus. It's a non-attack skill too. Same for Mero. Giving attack and accuracy buff is just an added bonus. The biggest factor here is her immortality buff, and that is explained in her EE. This is where you'll see the synergy and how my genius brain pieced this little puzzle together that VA game has given us. Her EE increases damage dealt by all allies proportional to Mero's missing health, which goes up to 60% extra damage. That is a lot. Hear me clearly, a lot of damage. You know how everyone complains how little damage Demi Drakan does, even after post buff? Now with Mero in the team, Demi Drakan gets to do an extra 60% damage on her skills. Think about it. 
But see, playing Meryl is pretty simple. You want to make sure she gets to slam her S3, get that immortality buff, boost your team's attack and accuracy, and keep that immortality buff for as long as possible. Why? Because the second her HP goes to zero, your entire team, including your healers, kick into overdrive when it comes to damage. There are a couple ways you can do this. One, you can tune Meryl to move first in your team comp, which means you're building her with respectable, not fastest, respectable speed, allowing her to move first in your team sequencing and turn cycle better. Two, you can build Meryl tanky so that she gets to stay alive even after that immortality buff wears off so that she can get the next turn and reapply it. Remember, there will be one turn where you go without immortality buff and gearing her to bridge that weakness will decide if Mero is best girl or a dumb bitch. 3. Make sure there is a healer in your team since that helps her keep her immortality buff forever. Remember, if she gets healed, her S2 cools down. And 4. Barrier plus building her tanky means your shield is harder to break. That means you get to reap the rewards of the 60% extra damage if you're a Chad and decide to go without a healer. Okay, we've talked about his skills and how to play her, but what about how to gear her? Now before I begin, I know a whole bunch of you are going to think about building her as your fastest unit with your fastest gear. Wrong! Wrong, wrong, wrong! Having a 154 base speed doesn't mean you go ham and tunnel focus your entire life savings into it. That's how you fucking go broke, even in real life. What you do is you zoom out and analyze it from all angles. Don't know how to do that? Here's how I do it, follow along. Mero has very fast base speed, so that means I can capitalize on it and focus a little bit more on all her other stats which are survivability and some damage. All my units are played around 130 to 200 speed, so all I really need for Mero is to be about 240 speed and she'll do just fine. That means I don't need to run her on speed set. That opens my choices up to run immunity on her to protect myself from big bazooka girl and clumsy idiot bitch. Now, I can either pair immunity with a set that helps me zoom like a motherfucker like swiftness set. Since I'm gonna be at 0 HP and swiftness set multiplier is 100% of large HP, essentially doubling my speed, or I can abuse the fact that her S1 is a dual attack enabler and punish people with counter attack set. That way, all I have to worry about is pressing S2 every time to extend my buff since I will be drafting her with a healer. Do you see how a genius thinks? It's fucking flawless. That is all done within one glance of the unit by the way. You can get there too, as long as you do your due diligence and follow me. Soon enough, you will think like me and become a G. In my honest opinion, Mero is not a unit you want to skip. You've backed for her ever since we saw her cameo in Tamara's side story. Now she's here. Get her! <laughs>